Welcome back to the Thought Leadership Series for Online Marketing TV. We have our uh, esteemed group of SEO and SEM experts here with us. Ram Fishkin, CEO of SEO Moz, Jamie Smith, CEO of Engine Ready, Chris Boggs, President of Sempo and Director of Search at Rosetta, and Alex Cohen, Director of Marketing at Click Equations. Senior Marketing Manager, Click Equations. Soon to be Director. Soon to be Director. All right, sorry about that. So, um, guys, I want to start off just talking kind of big picture here, right? You guys know a lot about search, probably more than most of the world in this room combined right now. So, um, when you think about search in the year to come, how, how do you look at it philosophically when you're talking about paid and organic and things to really kind of encompass how you properly plan your search strategies internally? Uh, so I think that us, any marketing strategy needs to follow customer behavior first and foremost. And that means doing things that customers are going to love to see when they search. Mm -hmm. So whether it's paid, whether it's organic, whether you're investing in social, whether you're looking into some of the new sort of Q&A platforms, right? There's a Stack Exchange and Quora and all these answer platforms on LinkedIn and Facebook that are taking off and, and a lot of uh, search activity happening there. Anywhere that that's happening, you need to be looking at what are consumers looking for, how are they looking for it, what do they like to see, and what res what elicits the right response from a consumer for your marketing strategy. If you if you don't align those, you might get a lot of traffic right. that was wasted effort. I, I love it. Probably one of the foremost thought leaders on SEO talking about customer behavior first. I mean, you haven't heard that over the years, and it's a great thing from a guy with that. Did, kind you, of did you want to tell me? To should I tell you to get links from directories? Is that what <laughs> I'm just pointing out the obvious, Submit which is which is an important point for all of us in search. Is we got to let our customers drive where we're going, not just our SEOs. No, not any knocking on anybody's expertise, but that's got to be the the start point. What do you guys think philosophically? How do we you look know, at search? I, I was thinking of an analogy earlier. Um, it, you know the game foosball, not the water boy, the foosball, but the, foosball. the actual, um, you know, yeah, so yeah, table soccer. Yeah, yeah. I was, I Imagine was champion at my okay. fraternity, by the way. Nice. So, yeah, so, so okay, foosball. so this is gonna, this is gonna work well with you. So imagine you're playing. You know how you have four sets of players. You have a goalie, a defender, a center, and a front man. You have to look at search this year with playing with all four of them. Imagine tying your hand, one hand, or disabling one of your lines. Now you may be good enough that you can go without your middle and just score from the D or you know score from your goalie even, right? And right. I, I'm certainly that good. <laughs> but the key is, is that if you're not playing with all four uh, of your you know lines of players, you're not gonna score goals. I, I think that's- hey, Who that's do you think about as the yeah, four? Who sort of, four yeah. So it's PPC, four lines. It's, it's organic, right? The two main, and then from organic, you got all the different universal search subsets like uh, images, videos, news listings, real-time results, uh, product listings, um, you know, there's a, uh, being in the related searches, you know, there's all these different opportunities there that are really each of the individual players. So, you know, I guess I would say organic is the middle guy because it's got five, right? So there's a lot of different guys, but your one goalie, you know, maybe um, your, your strategy for local, right? Maybe you've got, uh, you know, a good uh, presence in, in local results. So th Obviously, you could take this analogy a long way, but the key is is that without, for most non-godlike foosball players like <laughs> you, Aaron, um, you need all four, you know, to, to be able to compete and, and, and to score goals. Got it. Like it. All right. More philosophy on search right so now. So I think a really good way of thinking about, I'm coming from more of the PPC side, although it applies to SEO as well, is think about someone's search query, the actual words they put in the search engine as a question. Hmm. And to think about your text ad as the answer, mm -hmm. right? It's a very simple kind of mental model for paid search. Our goal yeah. as search marketers is really to figure out what questions we want to answer, what's the best way to answer that question, and how do we do so as profitably as possible, right? Yeah. Search query is the strongest indicator of somebody's intent, and Jonathan Mendez talks about intent a lot, and I really like what he says about it. And I think we as search marketers, as we think about you know, what we do on organic and all the different things that have evolved in paid search, it's really about how do we best target intent and how do we do it as cost effectively as possible. Yeah, I like that. Uh, that question and answer piece is a beautiful way to look at it. Yeah, and I, and I would just consider the trends, if you will, um, kind of geared around 
the two guaranteed aspects of, of, of life is death and taxes. Mm -hmm. But the third. So hold on, search. Search is related <laughs> to death and taxes. <laughs> if you don't do search, you will die, right? Yeah, and you'll pay more taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the third component is kind of change. It's constant change in this industry, especially with search marketing on yeah. both the paid side and the organic side, and, and kind of having the ability to assess the, the, the BS out there versus the facts and understand right. really what is changing and how is that going to affect my business or my search result pages and then taking action with facts, not, you know, assumptions and, and theory and, and uh, So facts versus foosball. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Couldn't help myself, Chris. It's the too devil. easy. Yes, that's right. So um, you guys talked about a lot of stuff and, and, you know, it's good to start for theory, but I want to start diving into some best practices, right? Like what's working out there. So in the age of change, right, the age of social media now, what are one or two cool things you're like, man, that really worked, that isn't common knowledge out there that you can share so everybody can take a stab at it? So not common knowledge is a little challenging, but there's there's two things that I'm bullish on right now. One is, uh, and I discussed this a little bit earlier with, our, with my friends here, but one is uh, Google's XML video sitemaps format, okay, which is, in my opinion, it's like cheating. It's essentially, oh, I, I don't have to compete with you on links or content or keyword optimization or branding or any of these other metrics. If Google decides, if I can get Google to trigger the video results in a search query and I have a video, I'm competing with maybe two or three other guys. Mm. Maybe. Mm. On a lot of search queries, you're competing with nobody yeah. because you're the only person who has video content. It's such an early adopter win uh, type of uh, opportunity that I'm just huge on it. And the, the simplest part is that it, is how it works. You know, you take a video, upload it to YouTube, upload it to Vimeo. Uh, you can use a hosted service. We use Wistia, which I like a bunch. You can use uh, Daily Motion or Spike TV or what, whoever you want to host it. As long as you embed it on your page, you can send an XML video sitemap with that URL to Google with the title of the page, and you can retitle the video if you want. You can add the keywords you want, the date, all this stuff, and you get those rankings. It's the nice. engagement level is so high, the branding quality is so good, it's just really remarkable. And the second thing that I love from a tactics perspective is the dramatic impact that uh, tweets are having mm. right now. So, so Google, finally tweets are having an impact, yes? Well, so it was weird, right? For a long time there, were, there was sort of a, a debate about the facts, right? Well, we, like, we talked about it even last year in Seattle, I know. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, right? Are tweets influencing? Are they not? How right. much are they? Right. And I was always sort of like, boy, you know, you, can, you really feel like it's there. Maybe it's a second order effect, but it feels like it. And Google and Bing both in an interview with Danny Sullivan come out and say, yes, we do use directly, not you know, a second order effect or the links that are created because of them. We use directly tweets, tweeted links, right. and we use uh, Facebook shares. Right. And we calculate the author authority of the people sharing and tweeting those. Wow. Which means there's now a page rank for Aaron Kahlo and Jamie Smith and Chris Boggs and Alex Cohen, right? So we, we all have to be thinking we about- have an Individual page rank. That's right, we <laughs> That's have individual scary, yeah. <laughs> author authority <laughs> right. that the engines are calculating around how important we are when we send something out or retweet something or share something on Facebook. Ren, will you share about the relevance side of that then too? I mean, if your authority is being developed and you're often tweeting about search. Or foosball. Well, so this is what I think <laughs> is interesting. At least when Bing was talking about it, they suggested, uh, and, and I believe this too, I think that right now the algorithms are naive enough that they essentially calculate relevancy, uh, or relevancy is not a concern from the author authority perspective. So it's not, Chris, you're an authority on search, so when you tweet about current events, let's say, you know, protests in Egypt, uh, Google will treat that as a non-relevant uh, or non-valuable uh, tweet. They are gonna treat that as relevant and valuable because you're an important person in the Twitter community. It's like the news side effect, right? So it's very natural for a uh, WTBS or wh whatever, a Channel 5 News channel, to have a bunch of random links going from the homepage and passing value. Yeah. Because there, the relevancy factor is thrown out. I, I, I agree with you, Ryan. I think that's uh, yeah, it's not a Yeah, it's it. not a topic specific type of thing. Yeah. Over time, I mean, let's imagine social evolves to the point where you know, it's getting spammed and gamed, and there's manipulation, there's what white hat, black hat. Are we not there yet already? Definitely not anywhere where, like we are at with the link graph on Our the web, right? Right, right. It, but SEO is a good future kind of predictor of where we're going with social. It totally social. is, yeah. it totally is, yeah. I agree. Yeah, and if you imagine that scenario, you could certainly imagine topic modeling being applied to what of all the tweets topic that you modeling, send. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, you yeah. use an algorithm algorithm to determine you a bucket of words model, and then it's like, hey, Chris looks like he's an authority on this stuff, not this stuff. Well, it's like my five-year-old son's, you know, there's a book, it's called Hats, and there's like about a hundred different kind of hats in there. There's about a hundred different black hat things that you can do. Uh, Your analogies are awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> he, he spent a lot of time with his son, foosball, the hats, I like That's it. Awesome. That's good. So, but, but back to that. So there's other a, best practices? Yes, <laughs> other best practices. I was just going to comment, though, that even the Wall Street Journal picked up. You see the article today, clout. They're talking about everybody and their clout and their total oh score. It's like wow. when that's in the Wall Street Journal, you know, this industry I keep thinking about has come so full circle. So is the circle. Wall Street Journal calling this authority clout now? They're, they're saying that's no, the, the company clout, K-L-O-U-T, is in the Wall Street Journal because people are, these social media experts or whatever they are, are trying to gain clout so that they can get invited to yes. fancy parties. Yes. <laughs> because big companies or big brands are using clout score to determine who to invite oh, wow. to what different I, events. What I found interesting was that they started using clout just subtly once as a verb. You know, you know, they were actually using it. So I was like, hmm, this is an interesting thing. I think their potential in terms of valuation just went up oh, yeah. tenfold. You so know, they have uh, they rented the office space below Twitter's offices oh, really? in San Francisco. Wow. Because they're sort of like, come on, buy us, buy us, buy us. <laughs> we're right downstairs. It's so easy. <laughs> I love it. So more best practices. Let's get a couple more, and then we'll move on to the next question. One or two quick ones. Anyway. So actually, I have one. Another Wall Street Journal search marketing article. I don't know if anyone saw it, but they wrote about... Um, Session-based retargeting with broad match. This is a very sort of esoteric thing. Wow, what a PPC. topic to be covering in a mainstream publication. I know. So what happens is, if you run broad match and I search, you know, like, uh, you know, hotels, and then I search mm -hmm. like Italy, I could see Italian hotel ads, and there was a whole ruckus about advertisers and whether you know they wanted or not. They sort of missed the point, and that it should actually be an option. Um, but it does dovetail into sort of my next next best practice, which is two things that came out recently. One is broad match modifier, mm -hmm. which is, modified broad match rather, which is sort of between phrase and broad match or old school broad match as um, somebody called it. And it's a way of restricting uh, your exposure but still getting some synonyms and related words there. And the other is negative keyword lists where you can create yeah. buckets of lists that yeah. you can apply en masse to your campaigns is a good way to sort of limit your targeting. Get more focused, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I like that, that's a great one. Jamie. So back to the organic, or go, go ahead. Well, no, we, we talked earlier on the, the session about uh, Google Instance impact on potentially decreasing mm -hmm. the inventory, which Rand seems to have proven wrong. But uh, one it of, wasn't <laughs> me, it's the data, man. <laughs> right. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Google bars didn't see Google Instant right away. So that, that study may have been skewed. Well, so the Google oh, toolbar so or the Mozilla Take a step Firefox. back. Let's talk. Right. Make sure everybody understands what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. So, <laughs> just to, right, so just to give the background on this, Google Instant launches, and a lot of people, myself included, I mean, I was guilty of this too, Jamie. Like, what I thought was going to happen is that Google would be biasing people towards searching for shorter phrases or searching for phrases that were more common. Yes. And that the long tail, you know, instead of searching for how to boil an egg or, or how do I heat water for an egg to boil? Someone would search for how to boil an egg because as soon as they search how to be, right. it fills in the rest. Yep. And a lot of people thought that, myself included. But then the data was showing essentially, you know, across thousands of websites, hundreds of thousands, I think tens of millions actually of queries, that uh, the number and length of phrases had not dramatically changed at all. Right. And I think this is partially because Google Suggest had already been around for years. Right. And so instant just made it more visible, but didn't change that behavior. So right. sorry, yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, just just taking that into consideration that uh, potentially, uh, you know, negative keywords and, and optimizing your account around broad, generic phrases, although those can be the most expensive and painful to go after, it becomes, it almost has to be part of your strategy because many of the consumers potentially might not make it to your long-term phrases, and so you have to create a long-term phrase by using negative keywords and, and advanced match settings, uh, geo-targeting, and all the advanced settings. Another trend that to, keep, to keep an eye out on is the display opportunity, mm -hmm. in that search is, is, is limited in its inventory. There's only so many people searching for a particular word or groups of words, but the display network is sort of an untapped yeah. opportunity that yeah. um, should be an initiative for, yeah. for this year. I, I will even say myself, we've found that to be extremely successful. We use the company that's actually here uh, called Bizzo, and they have mm. a B2B ad network, and we said, oh, all right, let's give it a run. Unbelievable. I mean, people were saying our ads in, you know, Yahoo Mail, they were seeing it on all the big media company sites that would cost me a lot of money, more than I was waiting, because they were using the network to fill in the inventory, 
and it worked great. So I think there's companies that are finally figuring this out, even for us on the B2B side. So I, I agree, it's an untapped opportunity where high propensity to drive, especially brand, let alone yeah. the conversions. You know, and that's nothing new, right? I mean, Razorfish had a sister company under Aquanib that yeah. sold kind of remnant. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, Microsoft spent, built, what, $7 billion to Lots. buy yeah. <laughs> Aquanib. What, what do you guys think about the, the whole Facebook integration? Because a lot of people were saying, you know, last year, two years ago, that with Facebook reaching, you know, four, five, six hundred million users, that all display advertising was going to start to go towards a Facebook login, and they'd use demographic and psychographic and data from Facebook to show you more relevant ads. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen it take off as much as I thought it would. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, but as you're catching in the silence, that's for our online advertising. Right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's a cool story that display is working. Uh, the, the, I'll, I'll stick with one kind of best practice that I, I think really merits consideration, and that's a lot of times people don't leverage the information that they already have at their hands that they may have spent thousands of dollars on. And I'm talking specifically towards uh, user experience research, yeah. uh, persona development, and even deep dive segmentation. Yeah. There's tons of stuff in there that is showing the intent and, and the, what we used to call the hidden keywords, right? Yeah. That people, if you're going to work it into your creative, if you can pull that in, and, and make more compelling copy as a result of understanding their psyche when they're making these searches or, or w understanding their psyche no matter where they are again in, in, the, in the awareness funnel or the, the purchase funnel, right? Whether they're at awareness or consideration or buy, yeah. really focusing in and, and uh, you know, developing that and, and, and leveraging it um, is, I think, the key to uh, greater success in, in, in increasing conversion rates and increasing desired you know KPIs to be reached again I heard it listen understanding the customer and getting that sense of their their psychographics yeah. and how they're really kind of connecting with you beyond the the basics that we used to do and the just demographic yeah. side of things T take advantage of it it's yeah, there the data is there it's yeah. like yeah. You, you know I mean you can do keyword research until the cows come home you can look at the 12,000 unique variations and so on and so forth and in there you'll find trends as well, you know, potentially adverbs being used or, uh, yeah. you know, typically the people, the reason people use the internet is, is for an exchange of information, right? So they're typically willing to give up an email address for a white paper, right? right. Or something like right. that. Right. So figure out what it is that's going to be their trigger and, and, uh, and, and make it happen cool. and leverage it and test it in paid search so yeah. that you can then work it into your organic, uh, the stuff that works. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to shift gears here and get a little personal now, right? Because we're talking all about, you know, the industry and search and what we need to be doing. But I'd like to understand a little bit more about you guys so everybody else can understand a little bit more about you guys. So we have this thing we call Facebook, right? And we all have friends on Facebook and we share a certain amount of information. So I want to know two things in short order from each of you. What's your line you draw between professional and personal on, let's use Facebook as the example, and then tell us why. And from that, the second main question is, give me one thing as your friend on Facebook, which I think I'm friends with all of you on Facebook, because I hope I still am. I haven't <laughs> lost my, my friend status. <laughs> something, that, 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 something that you <laughs> wouldn't share on Facebook that you feel comfortable sharing here on the camera today. Anybody? Oh, sure. I'll uh, go right down the line. Uh, so I actually... Facebook came out, what was that, about 18 months ago, they had that big privacy scare and they came out with all the new privacy settings, like Mark Zuckerberg sent an email to all the Facebook members and you know, here you can update your settings. So as soon as that came out, I went to Facebook uh, and I changed all my settings to uh, maximum transparency. Basically, I'm gonna think of Facebook as a blog. Yep. Anything that I publish right there, anything that anybody else writes there, as far as I'm concerned, it's public. Right. Completely public. Anyone can see it. Everyone should see it. Because you don't you don't own that data. R you truly, don't own that. Truly don't own that I, data. I don't, and I don't really, you know, if I want to have a private conversation with you, Aaron, right. I have this phone. Right. Like it calls you directly. There's yes. this thing called email. Yeah. We have dinners together, right? So there's there's all these other personal ways to connect. I think Facebook is a phenomenal way to sort of stay in touch with with data that you don't feel is it needs to be private. And the great part about that going back to the SEO perspective, is that uh, Google can only see publicly shared updates from Facebook. Right. So when they say Facebook stuff is influencing SERPs, yeah. they mean only the publicly Public shared. Yeah. So by having my account public, yeah. now, your now everything that I share there too. Uh, the one thing that I, I don't, I try not to share anything really private uh, at all on Facebook, but you know, one thing that I'll, um, that I'll share with you is that I, I've been trying to consider uh, when I can throw a 
like an anniversary party for my wife and I's wedding. And I'm, you guys tell me what you think. Is, is five years like too few to celebrate? Do you have to wait a whole 10? Because I kind of want to have a party a after five years, which would be... One day at a time, Ram. One day at a time. <laughs> In Southern California, hey. we celebrate days. Yeah, I, I was, was going to say... Five years is plenty of time to be celebrating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you guys all come, yeah. right? You want to celebrate? Yeah. We'll celebrate. All right, Rand's party. Do what you got. <laughs> what's, what's, the, what's the date of your anniversary? Uh, it's September the 14th. All right, be in Seattle September the 14th for Rand's anniversary party. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. invited. Exactly. <laughs> Might not do it in Seattle. Yeah. Right. Got it. Fair. What's the really quick, I mean, the one second version of the backstory on how you, didn't you like propose oh, something God. cool or something like that? On the Super Bowl, yeah. yeah, yeah. Super Bowl, right. that's right, yeah. yeah. Yes. You got a if you ad. search for a Super Bowl proposal, you'll That's find right. Tom Brady, and then you'll find me. <laughs> Brand did propose to his wife yeah, through was... a Super Bowl commercial, right? Yes. Well, it was aired afterwards, but yes. Got it. Okay, fair enough. Jamie? Uh, I've been really um, reluctant to jump both feet into social media because I'm very protective of information and private. I have a strong right. feeling of privacy. So for me, um, I everything that I do on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter is calculated to a certain extent. Right. Right? I, I've limited the number of pictures of my family, my kids, and yeah. I just feel there's a certain level of exposure that you're unnecessarily um, allowing access to certain personal information. So for me, I've always had this layer. Um, and so I draw the line with anything personal, but I'll talk about when I'm speaking at a show or I'll talk about something that I think is fascinating in the industry. Anything business related, yeah. I do actively. Um, you know, post, but um, I've tried to really keep it non-personal, which is is a it, it can be um, it can backfire yep. because then where's the relationship? This guy is just right. talking about business, and I'm not I'm not building a relationship with right. this guy. Right. So I'm not saying that's the right strategy. It actually can hurt you. Hmm. Um, but I've just been a little bit gun shy on being. Here's where I'm at right now, and this is what I had for dinner. And right. Right. You know, yeah. There's there's that blend. I, I, what I hear when I hear both of you talk though is find whatever your normalcy is in your offline life, and that usually translates pretty well to online, because if you're trying too hard doing one thing or the other, then it's not gonna be authentic, it's not gonna be good, no one's gonna care, because the people that really know you are gonna know anyway. Right. So I, I like that, because when I hear you guys talk about it, you're just doing what you normally do anyway. Right. And that, that's kind of cool. Chris? Um, so the first thing was Facebook, what, again? Oh boy, here we oh, go. Yeah. Right. Okay. So foosball. So, okay. no, so no, we were no, playing no, foosball no, with one no, hand, no, and if you had two hands, okay, how would you play right, the game? Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> so I try to draw the line, or I've tried to draw the line between Facebook and LinkedIn from a pure business networking perspective. Yeah. I've also used Plaxo, yeah. um, and I, Twitter, I'll, I'll pretty much follow you if it looks like you have an interesting stream, right? I don't have it set to auto follow or anything, much to the chagrin of those random bots that go out there with the <laughs> female's name and four numbers. I get about 10, 20 of those followers a day, and they're, you know, anyway, they, I think, are just preying on autos. But I have, um, when I accept a friend at Facebook, which I do often from a networking perspective, I have one setting that's for like friends and family, mm, yeah. and another one that's limited profile. Gotcha. And typically, um, which one am I? I which one am I under? I, th I would think that everyone here would probably be under friends and family, okay. so that you have full access to the pictures Thanks, of my kids and stuff. Right. Which I, you know, if on you one side I'm else. scared and so forth <laughs> from that perspective, but on the other side, I mean, there could be some weirdo outside my kid's school taking a picture of them too. You know, yeah. so um, I, I'm not going to kind of live in fear from that perspective. Right. Not saying that there's anything wrong with it, right? But. Um, I do try to limit the, uh, you know, the exposure to those kind of images from people at Facebook. And one of the things that I would have not uh, written on Facebook mm -hmm. that I see a lot of people doing, and I'm, it's all for them, is kind of like a, a daily diary of what I'm doing for losing weight, right? I mean, right. I've lost 25 pounds since November. Nice. Nice. And it's a result of doing usually an hour plus of cardio in the morning. I go downtown to Cleveland early. Yeah. I get on, uh, you know, um, an elliptical for 33 minutes. And I pump out about 550 calories. Nice. And then uh, I do you got a, some rock music treadmill. in the in the in the I do a treadmill. Uh, no, I actually mostly no uh, rap music. Rap, yeah. yeah. What kind of rap do you like? Uh, just a lot of the more recent stuff that you f you know you hear on. Series so no hip -hop. old school stuff. No. Ice oh no, I still got the old school. Also, yeah. But yeah. Like the power. So that's something I'm not going to report every day on Facebook. Right. I did one post about. You know, See, I would read that stuff. Minutes. I would love it. It'd be great. Yeah, but it's nah, like it seems too self-serving. I don't want to try to make it seem like it's my platform to brag. Right? Yeah. And yeah. then every time everyone sees you, they're going to be like, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? Maybe once when you're like, I'm here, right? And then you then you flex, take a picture, and then right. you post it. Alex, talk to us. 
So uh, I think I come from a little different perspective. I game the Facebook system and I created two profiles. Wow. Which, and uh, because I, what I realized is I have a. You should have said that. Like I know, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I have, you know, I have like a very close group of friends in Philadelphia, and it's essential that I mean your social life, my social life just works through Facebook. People just go on Facebook and look for events to figure out what you're going to do on Friday and Saturday. That's just how it is now, right? Oh, really? Yeah. you don't have kids. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's like, I mean, I just open it up and that's sort of my life for the weekend. Um, But because I work in search marketing and online marketing, people expect to be able to connect with me. Yeah on Facebook, and so I had to come up with a solution. Do you post twice, like one, if you think it's relevant for both, you go. I never post post professional stuff on my personal one because my friends don't care or even understand what I do. Um, I'm like, you know when you search on Google? (laughs) Um, But, and on the professional side, like I'm not gonna be like, well, I was out, you know, till on Friday till like, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning, woohoo, here are the pictures. (laughs) So I had to, that's the only place I really make that divide, like my, Tweets are all professional. My blog, I have, you know, two blogs are all professional. LinkedIn is all professional. But I had to create a place where I felt comfortable just sort of hanging out with my friends and just sort of sharing things. And they're mostly just sort of witty, snarky things. So what, what should we know about you that you're not putting on your professional Facebook persona? Mm, that's a good question. What's on your personal one that you can share with us that's not on the professional? Oh, Foot size 18 feet. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, I think it's mostly, I think it, there, might, there might be a little, uh, might be a little eye rolling at the amount of travel I have to do during conference season. I yeah. might not say All the right. people who graciously invite me. But gotcha. My friends are very jealous that I travel on a mic list and I get to see a hotel in each city. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I get them. stuck in a room taking interviews, right? And I ain't that sexy anymore, right? Oh, yeah. That's cool. I love it. Good. <laughs> guys, appreciate you being here. Look forward to having you back soon. Thank you very oh, thank much. You. Thanks, cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good stuff. Yep. Thank you.